Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And today we're going to talk about this whole marriage thing. What am I getting out of it? This whole submitting thing. What am I getting out of it? This whole affirming my partner. What am I getting out of all of this that you have been teaching? You constantly telling us what to do for the man. But what am I getting out of this whole thing? What am I getting out of it? Okay, that's my topic. But before I get into my topic, I want to I wanna say something because I want to make sure that I address this. I was on Facebook last night and there was a young lady. That's right. Like it up, like it up, like it up. There was a young lady um, and she was... I'm going to assume she was hurt. I'm just going to say that she was hurt. And the reason I'm going to say that she was hurt um, is because uh, she found out that her, I don't know if he was her boyfriend or her husband, but she found out that he had been unfaithful. But the issue was not about him being unfaithful, y'all. The issue was about the woman that he chose to be unfaithful with. She was posting this woman pictures up and she was literally in disbelief I mean, in disbelief that you mean to tell me you left all of this to go be with that. Oh my God. She was so upset. And y'all, let me tell you, she was posting this woman pictures and I don't know what I was looking at most, the background of the picture or the woman, but neither one of them was too pleasant. I'm going to be honest with you. It was not pleasant at all. But the reason I wanted to talk about this and address this is because what I want you to understand is a lot of time when a lot of times when men step out they step out low they step out beneath what you are bringing to the table so that lets you know right there that they not stepping out because they care about the way this woman look they not stepping out because they care about the way she clean they don't care about that kind of shit we care about that we care about our appearance we care about the upkeep of our homes we care about everything and we put everything first but the person who we're in a relationship with. And what you got to understand is the person that he's stepping out with ain't got shit going on. And all she got to do, all, all she got to do is to put him first. That's the only thing she got to do with herself all day long is to make sure that he feel important. To put him first. She don't care about no cleaning. She know that when he come there, he'll step over all of that shit. Just to get to some attention and some affection and somebody to stroke his ego and not criticize him and lift him up and make him feel good, which is all the shit that I've been telling y'all to do for the last couple of weeks, which is affirm your man and make him feel like something, make him feel like he's special, make him feel like he's important. This is the shit that I've been telling y'all for the last couple of weeks. But are we so surprised that he willing to go to the dumpster to get this attention and affection that he looking for. We act like we surprised. I ain't surprised. I ain't surprised at all. Because I know one thing. If you feed a man, this is an analogy. Because some of y'all take shit so literal to it's not funny. To the point where it really irks my ass. When I was talking about the team, the owner, and the manager... Oh, she's saying that he on you and all this. Y'all, oh my God. But I ain't gonna get out. That's, that was a whole nother last week. This is the analogy. You feed your man, meaning that you make sure you are covering every aspect. You affirming him. You listening. You allowing him to be the leader. You fucking the shit out of him. You, you covering everything that he needs from you. If you feed your man, he will leave out the house and he will pass up his favorite meal because he is full. He can, have, he can see his favorite meal and he will pass that shit up because he is full because you have fed him well. But you send your man out the house starving for whatever it is that he need in his life at the moment. He'll eat out the motherfucking dumpster. He'll eat out of somebody's house that's nasty. He'll eat from anywhere if he's hungry enough.
y'all got to get off these high horses. Y'all have to become teachable. You have to stop feeling like you know everything. Because let me tell you something, baby. If you knew it all, you would not be going through the same thing over and over in every relationship. You would not be on marriage number three, possibly number four. You doing all the shit that your grandmother and your mama told you and they couldn't even keep a fucking man happy. You need to become teachable. And you have to understand that it's certain things that men need from women. And when I'm saying need, meaning that it is necessary. And if they don't get it, they're going to go find it from somewhere else. It sounds horrible. Because you're doing everything that you think that you're supposed to be doing. And I know that I don't need to do nothing else. But the thing is, if we all take a look at ourselves, we can all improve somewhere. A lot of y'all really, really think that you don't have no error nowhere in your ways. And sometimes your error could just be your tone and the way you talking to people. Sometimes your error could just be that you don't have time. And it's the truth. So I wanted to bring that to the attention because this lady was so upset and she just was posting this woman pictures up because she was devastated. Y'all, she could not believe that he, he stooped so low. And the thing is, Sharonda Parker can believe that he stooped so low because I live this shit every day. I'm in this store and I watch men who come in here with prostitutes. And if you want to talk about stooping low, I just feel like that's one of the ultimate. Because you know goddamn well she fucking everybody because she got to get paid. So if you, don't, if you got to log out, this is the analogy you need to stick with today before I get into this, um, into my live and into my discussion. Feed your man. Make sure he is full. And I'm not talking about food-wise. I'm talking about you're feeding him. You are being everything that, that he needs you to be. You're affirming him. You, you that listening ear. You that feminine asset. You, you're what he needs. He will pass up his favorite meal. Somebody say, what is it that the outside woman offered that the wife don't offer? A peace of mind. Allowing him to feel like he's a man at the moment. Not criticizing him. Lifting him up. Being available to be able to talk. Being available with her time. Making arrangements for her children when he coming over. And we married and a lot of times we have children, but we won't even make arrangements to have sitters for our own children so that we can have adult time. When he over there and he fucking that side woman, she ain't got her churn in the bed with her. Her churn ain't in the fucking bed with her. I don't know where the fuck they at, but they ain't in her bed while she fucking your husband. But you can't seem to get your motherfucking churn out the bed. Oh, they gonna cry. Oh, they gonna, they gonna be upset. They gonna be this. They gonna be that. That's a whole nother message because I'm getting off the topic. Of what I'm supposed to be talking about today. So, today's topic. I'm doing all of this. What am I supposed to be getting out of this whole great deal of being a wonderful wife? Most times when I'm talking to women, for some reason, a lot of women... Don't understand that the greatest, the greatest gift that you're giving has nothing to do with something that's materialistic. I'm going to repeat that. A lot of times we have this mentality, whereas I do this and I get that. And that is the way we have lived our life for our whole lives. When we was with our parents and home with them, we did chores, we got allowance. Um, we made good grades. We got this. In other words, you have this mentality of a, I do this, I get that mentality. So what happens is when I, I asked you to do your homework and I said to list some chores and some things that you do, right? And then I want you to list some things that, that you would like to do in your own free time during that time that you would normally be doing a chore. 
The only thing that gets me about giving out these assignments, and I know that they're not being done, I know you're not visiting the announcements, is because I could look at the thread, I could look at the, the content on the on the um on the timeline, and a lot of things that y'all are asking questions for are things that the questions have already been answered if you are doing the assignments. This group is about to go through a major transformation. This group is about to go through a major transformation. And I'm still going to be talking about the content of I'm still going to be talking about sex and tips and all of this kind of stuff, but I have a greater interest at this point, and that is to help you in your relationship because the thing is, you can't be all who you need to be in the bedroom sexually if you got a lot of underlying issues in your relationship, and that's just the bottom line, okay? It's to the point where I, I got side chicks contacting me saying, can you hook up something for us because we now we want to be married because we, we tired of these... Uh, Married men that we dealing with not being able to take us out in public and do all of this kind of stuff. Because see what that happened is their wives is in the group too. And see their wives is working this shit that I'm telling them. Right? See if you in the group and the side woman in the group and you really want your marriage and all of this kind of shit. Because I ain't got nothing to do because you know I'm not about to get off into that whole oh why she want him and she but you want him. You, you cheating too. You cheating with him and you want him. But anyway... Now the wife has stepped her game up because she found she following the Sharonda Parker plan. And they got date nights and shit going on. And she affirming him. And she making him feel good. And all of this shit. But what happens is now he ain't really got no use for the side woman no more. And now she feeling fucking left out. And she realizing I need my own man. Because I want to go on dates too. And I want to do all this different stuff too. See, it's a major transformation that's about to happen. Whether you know it or not. It's a major transformation that's about to happen. And a lot of relationships are about to be restored. A lot of marriages are about to be fulfilling. But I'm just giving you the heads up. It's a major transformation that's about to happen. So anyway, you want to know what you get out of it. A lot of people are looking for monetary stuff. Oh, I'm looking for gifts. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. But when I ask you, what are some things that a person could do to show you appreciation? A lot of y'all couldn't answer that question. And that was a part of your homework. See, you have to get in tune with who you are. What makes you feel appreciated? For me, you know what makes me feel appreciated? My kids' grades just came home. And see, when they hand me them report cards and them grades looking the way I need them to look, that's my appreciation. That affirms me. That lets me know that I'm doing everything that I need to do as the as as the 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 other team player that's that's a part of this team. See, Spencer's the head of the team. I'm just the manager. It lets me know that I'm managing correctly. See, when you work a job and your manager give you tasks to do, and you following the tasks that your manager told you to follow, right? And then your manager goes and she pull that report up. And they see all the statistics then raised up. Everything is on the up and up because you're following the direction of the manager. The manager is able to come back to the owner and say, look, this is what we're doing. This is what we are now. Then you are able to go and you're able to get maybe that, maybe that, um, that employee, you get a bonus. Maybe you show them some type of recognition, plaques, awards, all types of stuff like that. So what I'm saying is, all you got to do is pay attention to your fruit. My children are my fruit. All I got to do is pay attention to my fruit. That, show, that is your reward, woman, lady, wife. That's your reward. You got a family. Your reward is gratefulness. To understand that you got a family, y'all got a house, y'all are comfortable, it's warm because it's cold outside. Some people ain't got that. That's your reward. A lot of y'all walking around and you not being appreciative of the small things or of the, I believe what happens is you start taking things for granted. 
and you say, oh, I'm not feeling appreciated. What you got to do is you got to start showing appreciation. See, when I fuck my husband and my husband fuck me and we fucking each other when it's over, baby, thank you. That was awesome. That was amazing. That was wonderful. That was this. In other words, we're going to let each other know that we did a good job because we don't take that for granted because we know too many people that have sexual issues and erectile dysfunction and vaginal dryness and all of this other kind of stuff. So just because our parts are still working the way we need them to work, that's enough to be appreciative of. But even y'all will take that small thing about your sex life and not even show appreciation for that. So you want appreciation in your household? You got to show it. You want your children to be appreciative because you didn't cook? You got to teach them how to do that. You got to teach them how to say thank you. See, all you got to do is pay attention to your fruit. I promise you. If your household is chaotic, it's because the manager is not managing correctly. Somewhere along the line, the manager focuses elsewhere and not on the household. Yes, we all have to work. Yes, we all have jobs to do. But I promise you, a schedule is your friend. Organization is your friend. Planning ahead of time is your friend. I just posted yesterday about who's cooking. That's one of the major tasks that women have is to cook for the household. But I provided a schedule and say, mother, your job is to cook on Sundays and cook enough to have leftovers on Monday. Tuesday is dad's turn to cook. Well, if dad likes to grill and he and, and he and he's giving you his menu, then your job is to make sure when you go to the store that he has everything that he needs to do his grilling with or whatever that he needs. So dad is grilling on Tuesday. Children, children is going to prepare the meal on Wednesday. They're going to do the things that they can do, whether it's cook hot dogs, whether it's make uh, ham sandwiches and potato chips for everybody. They're going to do things in their capacity. Because what you got to understand is everybody is invested in this household. So now we got, we got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday taken care of. You, the last time you cooked was Sunday. Not Thursday rolls around. Mother, this is your day again. And you can decide what you want to cook. Now, I love going to the grocery store and getting all this pre-made shit that I can just throw in the oven. That's what I like. I love going to Oak Point because they have a whole section in the stove full of shit that's pre-packed, already prepared, bell peppers already stuffed. All this shit already, all I got to do is run that shit through the oven. And everybody going to eat good. Friday, take out. That's, that's your day. You go get your pizza. You looking for a pizza place here in Baton Rouge? Go to Fat Boys. It's a black-owned pizza place. Best pizza in the city. Get you some pizza. Or y'all do hamburgers. Or y'all do tacos. Or whatever it is y'all going to do on the takeout night. Saturday, you have the option of doing takeout or letting everybody do cold cuts, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, whatever they want to do. Because, mother, you preparing to cook again on Sunday. That's called organization. It, you should not be trying to figure out Every day, what y'all going to do when you ripping and running here, that or other? A lot of the problem is your lives are not organized. And it's causing you great pain in your relationship because you're feeling overworked. My children know. See, y'all got little kids. Even if they obligation ain't to do nothing but to fold up the towels, you teach them how to, they know, they know how to fold up their blanket in kindergarten. So you mean to tell me you can't get your lit, your lit three or four year old the, the task of folding towels and, and teaching them how to put, put it up and get a little step stool so that they can get reach the cabinets that they need to reach to, to put the shit up to teach them some skills because you're saying you're doing everything. I'm trying to teach you how you ain't got to do everything. I'm trying to teach you how to delegate responsibility in your household because everybody in your household has to be invested from you to your husband to your children. Let me tell you something. I have a lot of people who have inboxed me about wife school and I, am, I, 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 love, the, I love the fact that you're interested in coming to the school. And I understand that it is um, a cost tied to it. And I don't like to say that it's not affordable because it is affordable. One thing that I know is we make happen what we want to make happen. If you could buy a wig, you could put a deposit down on wife school. 
It's so much that you do that you don't have to do. So if this was something that you were really invested in, I don't give a damn if you got to sell fish plates to pay for the tuition for white school. You would do it if you was really that interested in it. So the thing is, what I had to learn was I get on here and I teach and I give assignments and I ask for y'all to post date night. I ask for y'all to, um, so I, I did a post the other day and it was a simple post. 6,000 people in this group and I asked, what have you learned from this group? List one thing that you learned. 50 people commented. 50 out of 6,000. What I learned years ago is people don't value what they don't pay for. Anything that you're giving them for free, they don't value it. If Jordans was free, y'all wouldn't want them. And it's the truth. If a Louis bag costs $5, none of y'all would want to walk around wearing it. Y'all have everything to say about, oh, the, the L and the V, all that look cheap. Everything look cheap. But because these bags are $1,200, $2,000, dollars women love them. People value what they have to pay for and invest in. And I had to make the cost I feel like it's affordable $500 with a $100 deposit balance of $400. If I made it too cheap, you wouldn't take it serious. See, I'm only interested in women who have an interest in being a good wife and bettering themselves and, and understanding their role and their purpose and taking a family in another direction and building generational wealth. And all of, those are the type of people that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for people who want to pull off and only want to do it if they thought it cost $2. Because see, when y'all thought it was $2, my inbox was flooded trying to make sure you did not miss out on the wife's school for $2. But again, I give content for free. I give assignments for free that y'all don't do. That lets me know I have to put a cost on this because I'm only interested in the people who want to do it for real. See, when you done paid your $500, I ain't got to worry about you showing up for class because you're going to show up and you're going to be on time and you're going to have your questions ready and I'm going to be ready to, I'm going to be ready to answer them. I'm going to be ready to work with you. I'm going to be willing to hold your hand and guide you through this whole process because you invested. But see, if I was to say, oh, well, because I even thought about this. I said, well, what I could do is I could still do the wife school for free. And just ask everybody to give a $5 tip. Ask everybody in the group to give a $5 tip. And then everybody get the information. And I can set it up on Zoom. Because you can have up to 10,000 people on the Zoom if you wanted to. But I can set it up on Zoom. Or I could go live in a group or whatever. I could do it just like that. But a lot of people had a problem with giving me $2 to bless me with this bag. So my point is. You got to put a cost associated to two different things because when you do it for free, people don't value it. I remember for a few years, I was doing fun parties during the month of January for free. If you were a business owner and it was supposed to be a networking opportunity for me and other business owners, I kid you not. Every year that I did those free fun parties for business owners, they put zero effort in making sure they invited clientele to the parties. Some of them even canceled the day of the party because they had forgot. But see, had they paid for the, the uh, fun party, it would have been different because they had paid for it. But I was working with them for free. So being that they didn't pay anything for it, they didn't put any effort into it either. And that is what broke me up and let me know that you have to charge for your services. See, when you're in my inbox, and you get to talk about, oh, I want to come to the store. I want to come when I know you there. No, 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 no. You want access to me? You book me for a session. We do a Zoom meeting and you got me for a whole hour. I try my best not to work this store only because I don't want to be here and you getting services that you haven't really paid for. Because some of y'all will come up in here and all y'all want to do is talk. You ain't interested in buying nothing. You will come here and take up all, you will spend the whole fucking work shift with me telling me about this man that you ain't going to leave. But you just want somebody to vent to and to be able to talk to and listen. All right. Woo! All right, Sharonda, calm down. Y'all see this? Strawberries.
Why do I have strawberries? Strawberries. An aphrodisiac is defined as a food or drug that arouses sexual instinct. Why am I talking about strawberries? Aphrodisiac? An aphrodisiac is, is defined as a food or drug that arouses, ar arouses, Lord, my vocabulary. Let me, let me slow this down. An aphrodisiac is defined as a food or drug that arouses sexual instinct. Okay? I got my little bullet points. In France, there was a tradition of serving newly married couples cold strawberry soup to increase sexual desire during their honeymoon. I actually Googled the recipe to the cold strawberry soup and it's strawberries, yogurts, orange juice, and you cool it, chill it, and you eat it. Okay, so let's get some tips about strawberries. The next time you feel like, you know, your, little, your libido off a little bit, Eat you some strawberries. Get you a bowl of strawberries. Strawberries boost your sex drive. The seeds in the strawberries have high levels of zinc. Strawberries contain large amounts of antioxidants, which helps with blood flow to our sex organs. In men, zinc regulates the level of testosterone which is needed for sperm production. A man can deplete his body's entire supply of zinc if he has sex three times a day within 24 hours. In women, if you have higher levels of zinc, the body prepares itself for sex quicker, meaning, again, that blood flow. The great things about strawberries is they provide a sustained uh, levels of energy, meaning that you're getting a lot of good clean energy, right? And very few calories. They are not high in calories at all. When you are selecting strawberries, you want to select strawberries. Let me find a, a nice pretty one. Oh yeah, this one is really pretty. You see this? It's similar to the color of my shirt. Okay. You want to get strawberries that are firm, chubby, not damaged, or marked in any type of way. You want this strawberry to be perfect. Pick those that are shiny with a bright red color. Wash them, let them sit out, and become room temperature before serving. Y'all see that? You see how bright red that is? It's the same color as my shirt. Okay. All right. So that is my little tidbit on strawberries. I found that information out and I said I wanted to make sure that I shared that with you all because at the end of the day, my job is to teach. All right. So if you need to register for the wife school, the link is up on the website, www.dppgstore.com. I have about 30 packets. I was waiting on one more thing to come into the packet for the oral sex training class which was, I was going to give you a sample packet of flavored lubricant for the class. But I decided that I wanted to give you a whole bottle of flavored lubricant. So, I, because I wanted you to be able to do it for the class, but then I wanted you to be able to do it with your man too, you know, and still have product left over. So, I ordered 100 bottles of lubricant, flavored lubricant. Anyway. Um, so these packets, I'm, I'm looking at them. These packets are about to get mailed off like within the next 30 minutes. Um, so if you register for the oral sex training class, your packet is on its way today. I still have like about 12, I want to say 12 or 13 more seats for oral sex training. And I say that because that's how many dildos I have left. I'm not ordering any more dildos. So that's how many dildos I have left over. If you want to do the class for oral sex training, yes, somebody send me a message talking about uh, techniques for hand jobs and all that. Baby, you got to register for the class. Y'all have to be willing to invest in yourself. Free is great, but don't be don't don't ever feel like you can't um, patronize the business of the person who you're trying to get the information from. If they got information and they give some things for free and other things they're charging for, if you want to know it, don't. You don't have to uh, 
feel some type of way about booking a class to learn how to suck dick and be me. Like, you want to be the best at it? You want to know that you know for certain? That you know everything that it book the class? Okay? Um, I always say, like, I'm, I'm going to use it for example. How would you feel if every day I was out here and I'm, I'm walking around and I got these strawberries, right? I got, I'm walking around and I'm like, oh, here you go to free samples. Here you go. This is free. This is free. Free samples. And every day, you know that I'm giving out free samples of strawberries and you come here every day just to get a free sample of strawberry. But then one day I say, you come here every day and get my strawberries for free. Get a free sample. When you going to buy some? When you going when you going to patronize? My website is open. Patronize. My cash app for my YouTubers, my cash app, dollar sign PPG store. Don't be afraid to bless and tip. All right, that concludes. And the reason I have to, I have to say that, because see, I used to didn't say that. But I said I'm going to start saying that because what I notice is people don't do it on their own. They ain't got the, they ain't got the mentality to say, let me see what I can do because this person got my damn bedroom off the chain. Let me see what I can do to, to contribute to what they got going on. Some people, and I appreciate the ones that go on the website. Let me tell you, my website booms. I appreciate the ones that go on the website, but I just think for the amount of people who, who pay attention to the content, the numbers should be up a whole lot more, okay? You all be blessed. You all be safe. And don't forget to get you some strawberries.